Welcome to this week's video, my fellow handmade business owners. I'm Sarah and here on my channel, we talk about growing a handmade bath and body product business from the ground up, from the actual trenches themselves. Today, our value comes in the form of an important business practice that we're going to kind of bring down to the realm of a small handmade business owner, and that is unique selling perspectives, or you may have also heard of it as unique selling point or unique selling proposition. Now, this concept definitely isn't something new. It's not something that I invented or anything like that, but it is something that I worked really hard on so far this year in 2022 with my own handmade business. And as always, as soon as I find something that is helping me, I like to pass it along to you. Through my research, I have found that there are three major components to consider when developing your own unique selling perspective. Um, I'm actually going to call it USP moving forward just to kind of shorten this video. I have a feeling it's going to be quite the long one. Now, these are absolutely not the typical, well, what do you think that your customer might like pieces of advice? We are going to hit it hard and actually develop our USP right here, right now. Hopefully you are ready. Let's go ahead and get into it. So very briefly, what exactly is a USP? You can Google and read all of the articles that you want, but I just wanted to provide a quick definition for it. And this comes from indeed.com and it is quote, a slogan that businesses use to make themselves stand out in a crowded marketplace. It not only describes the business itself, but the product that it offers. Okay. So I've always kind of thought of it as like the vibe of a brand or like when you click on their website or when you walk into that store, like what do you automatically feel? Okay. Let's get into our components. I'm going to talk a little bit quick because again, this is going to be a long one. So the first component, what we're going to talk about now does take up the majority of this video because it's kind of like the back end or the brainstorming of it. And then when we get to components two and three, we're actually going to like apply it to our own brands. Component one, stay with me the whole time. Okay. Just trust me, stay with me the whole time. We are going to write a list. I know what you're thinking. You're probably like, Sarah, this is literally as generic as it gets. I'm clicking off of this video, but trust me, don't do that. Okay. Stay here. We're not just writing about what we care about. We're writing about the things that we hundred percent believe in. We would throw ourselves under a bus to prove it. Like which may be a little bit aggressive, but you know, you really do truly have to believe in this a hundred percent and finding these things really comes down to tone beliefs and upkeep or maintenance. So I'm going to rattle off a whole bunch of questions with some examples and I want you to kind of answer the question. Sorry, my laptop's down here cause I don't want to forget anything. Um, and I want you to write down or type out your answers as we're going through them. When you're ready, get that paper and pencil or that computer, however it is you like to organize your ideas and get ready. We're going to answer these questions just very, very quick fire type of uh, format here. And it's really important that when you're doing this brainstorm that you just let it all out, like brain dump it. We'll worry about paring it down and choosing and selecting things later. Right now, just get out everything that you feel. When you talk, what kind of tone do you have? Are you calming in nature? Are you fun? Are you loud? Are you boisterous? Um, are you sarcastic? Are you lighthearted? All of those things. How, when you are talking to other people, like actually talking to other people in conversation, how do you talk to them? When you're thinking about something, do you think of it from more of like a technical perspective or are you more of an outside of the box, like abstract thinker? Are you more specific? Are you a seeker of details? What goes on in your brain when you're thinking? What's your personal decorating style? And I mean this like as a person and in your home, are you more boho? Are you kind of more farmhouse? Are you minimalistic? Do you have a bunch of stuff everywhere? Are you more luxurious? Like what exactly do you feel when you walk into your house or when you walk into your closet and see all of your stuff 
hanging there. What colors are you gravitating towards? Are you more of a neutral gal? Do you like bright pops of color? Is there some middle ground in there that you prefer? And again, if you can't figure out what this one is, walk into your closet because I'm telling you when you look at it through this lens, it is a true eye opener. If I had to describe my look, it is literally stripes and polka dots everywhere, just everywhere. How do you carry yourself? You know, when you're walking, do you have a more professional walk? Are you more laid back and relaxed? Are you taking a quiet stroll or are you in a hurry and trying to get somewhere quick? And I know that some of these questions seem like a little weird, like how could they possibly apply? But I promise you, they absolutely apply. And finally, when you walk into a store that A, you've either never been to before or B, has like a new product section or a website, I guess would also work. Um, when you get there, what is the first thing you pick up and why is that what you pick up? Were you drawn or attracted to the color? Were you drawn or attracted to the price? What about that product made you say, you know what, I might not buy this, but I do wanna go ahead and check it out. The truth is your USP really does align with exactly who you are as a person and your natural tendencies. Before we move on to applying all of the answers that we just created to our brand, um, I wanted to kind of just share with you briefly my story. In the summer of 2021, while on our summer vacation, my daughter, my son, and myself went to Michael's looking for like a fun, you know, thing to do. Um, and we got some stuff to make soap and bath bombs. And quite unexpectedly, we like absolutely loved it. Um, so that's kind of where, that's kind of where things started. So when I started thinking about it and taking it a little bit more seriously, kind of what I decided was to go with more of like a minimalist approach to things. My color palette was very neutral. It was very greens and tans. Um, you know, I just, was really focused on keeping the images that I used for my products and the descriptions just super clean, super easy to digest. Like I just wanted everything to look very clean, minimalist, like botanically, you know, those kinds of things. Now that minimalist type vibe really, really displayed well on my website. I thought it looked really nice. Um, it was just, it was very, very clean and to, very to the point, right? So you could go find what you were looking for, read about it, know what you needed and order it. Very, very minimalistic. So I was showing my husband my website one day and he was like, wow, like this is really, really professional. And I thought, huh. So it stuck with me for a bit. And I couldn't quite figure it out at that moment. But like, as I continued to think about it, I realized that professional stuck out to me because that's not at all how I would describe myself. I'm like super chill, I'm laid back. I would not at all consider myself to be professional. Yes, I'm a teacher and I have professional moments, but I'm known as like the goofy teacher that has, you know, fun conversations with parents. I'm not, it's just that professional is not at all the vibe that I have. And I know people don't look at me and go, you know what? She's super professional. It's just not me. It's kind of when I realized that my unique selling perspective was non-existent um, and, and actually is when I started talking to you guys about it in previous videos. Short story long, this really got me to think about kind of where I wanted my brand to go and how I could be more true to my own voice in my brand. So my unique selling perspective is that I am a fun bath and body product shop focused on finding the bright side of adulthood through really bubbly, like pink feminine experiences. You know what I mean? That's really what I see when I look at my new website. And again, I'll pop a picture here and have the link for you down below if you kind of want to check out what I'm talking about. I'm just really not a minimal type. Uh, I'm a little bit extra and a little, you know, pink and bubbly and fun and, you know, lighthearted and I like to laugh and, you know, those kinds of things. I'm just not the professional. I'm just, I'm just not. And if you are, that's awesome. Like you should definitely go for it because there is absolutely a market for it. Minimalism is huge right now. A, you know, kind of pared down, um, no nonsense sort of brand would be an excellent choice if that's who you are, but it's just not, 
it's not me. You know, when you look at my website now compared to how it was, it totally looks, it looks absolutely different in such a good way. And again, if you are a minimalist or if that's your style or if you're boho and you're focused on, you know, all of those really nice tones like the gold with the orange and the coral, that's awesome. If that's you, then you should absolutely have it as a part of your brand. I truly do think that this has made a huge difference for me. Ever since kind of updating um, my brand's vibe, I don't feel like creatively cornered or put into a box that wasn't true to me. I just have so many ideas like flowing, 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 and I can't wait to start creating. And that's what it's all about, right? That's literally, that's the exact point of a creative handmade business. So my original plan was to put all three components in this video, but it's already too long. And I don't wanna cut out anything that I've already covered. So, ooh, don't hate me. But I am gonna actually move components two and three or like applying what we learned today to a part two of this video that I will set live next week. Sorry, I know that's not what I wanted to do, um, but I also don't want like, to have a 40 minute long video that just doesn't sound like fun at all. So here's your homework, okay? Between now and next Thursday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I want you to take a serious look at that brainstorming sheet, figure out exactly what you want, all right? Exactly what you want. This is going to be like the living and breathing soul of your entire business, so make sure that it truly speaks to you. If you are luxurious and you have like an Audrey Hepburn vibe, then be that. If you're preppy and you love like the monograms and those kinds of things, then be that. If you're minimal, be it. Whatever it is that you decide you are is totally fine. There's a market for it. Trust me, there's a market for it. But just be solid in your decision and ready to hit the ground running next week at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We are going to apply these and move on. Okay. All right. Subscribe so you don't miss it. And also ring that bell. I will see you. I don't know why I did this. That was weird. Subscribe so you don't forget to come back next week. You'll receive a notification that the video has been posted. Any questions that you have, comment them down below. I will be down there answering all of them, but also make sure that you're commenting with kindness because there's no reason you can't. All right. I'll see you next week. Bye.